Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Welcome to the course on youth ministry, introduction, inter, introduction to youth ministry. I uh, hope you all are doing well. You had a good weekend. Uh, Kieran, good to see you. Aaron, as always, good to see you too. Um, we will pray and we'll get started. And, um, and as we go on, we people will join us. Okay. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this new week. Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning, Father. Lord, even as we take time to learn about youth ministry, uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would uh, continue to teach us, help us to be sensitive to the leading of your voice, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, share my screen and... Uh, Are you able to see? Yeah, no, right? No, Pastor. Okay, let me try and try that again. Sorry, guys, just be, uh, give me another second, please. Okay, uh, for some reason, uh, it's coming up blank. I don't know what. Uh, the problem is I don't want to waste time on with it. Uh, but I hope it's okay if I'm not, uh, if you're not able to see the screen. I just uh, request you to keep your PDF handy. Um, apologize, because I don't know what the technical problem is. It's not sharing anything. Okay. Um, so in, in the last class, we looked at chapter four the organizational aspect of youth ministry. Uh, in your PDF, page 15, we went through uh, how's, uh, how the youth ministry is organized at uh, all, all People's Church, right? Um, if you can just follow along with me to do a quick recap. Um, the structure, the way it's set up uh, is uh, senior pastor oversees everything and I'm under his supervision. And then, uh, and the core team is under the supervision of me, right? Yes. Um, so there's the senior pastor, youth pastor, and then the core team. Um, and the role of the pastor uh, we see was that he is the one who provides general vision, direction, and motivation. Um, and he shares his goals for the youth ministry, right? Through the youth pastor. Okay, he shares his goal, his heart, his vision, uh, for youth ministry through the youth pastor uh, and then the youth pastor takes it to the team and uh, and also it's not to say that uh, everything is only you know given by the senior pastor but it is also the role and the responsibility of the youth pastor to come up with different strategies uh, for for the youth ministry like uh, different outreach uh, strategies how to, uh, different plans etc etc okay uh, the role of the youth pastor now uh, there's only three, three or four points here, but uh, as I always mention, uh, this list is not exhaustive. That means it's not just these three points. Um, the role, when I say the role of the youth pastor is just make a relationship central, lead with care, rely upon God, it doesn't end there. Okay, there's so much to our role. Okay, yes. so uh, but some of the key points that we looked at as a role of the youth pastor is one, make a relationship central. Okay, uh, as most of you are already leaders in your churches, uh, or you, some of you might be future leaders in the church, uh, and not all of us are very comfortable in going and meeting people, right? We are not always uh, um, extroverts, as they say, but you know, some of us would be introvert, you know, it's like, okay, I like to be to myself, I don't want to go, I don't like 
going and talking to people much and whatnot. But as leaders, uh, as ministry leaders, we don't really have the choice. Our responsibility, our job, our role calls for us to go and uh, engage uh, with uh, people, like speak with them, uh, you know, build a relationship with them. Okay, uh, because that's going to go a long way. More than anything you ever teach or preach, uh, what they will remember is uh, the relationship that you and that person shared. Okay, um, so build a relationship, make that central. Okay, and uh, this having said that, that led us to the second point leading with care. And it's we simply saw one line that says, The youth don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay, um, I don't think we need to re-emphasize that, but, and then finally rely upon God in everything that you do, in everything that you are planning, in your strategies, in your vision, in your goals, in your missions, et cetera, et cetera. Rely upon him, right? Uh, and we see that, uh, you know, I'm just reminded of this passage uh, in the Bible from Second Samuel at least, Time and time again, David will go up and ask God. It's like it's it'll say, David inquired of the Lord. David inquired of the Lord, right? Uh, so he would go into a battle. He would go and ask God. It's like, okay, if I go and fight against the Philistines now, will you hand them over to me? God would say, go, uh, and and then he will go into another battle. Now, just because uh, God said go the last time. Uh, you know, David is not overconfident. He's like, okay, yeah, he said yes the last time, so I'm going to go and attack this battle as well. But it shows his humility where he goes back to God and asks, okay, sh should I go and do it again? Okay, so and I think uh, it should be a constant reminder for us to keep inquiring of the Lord. Right to go back to him and ask, okay, be dependent on him, be, uh, be sensitive to the leading of his voice because he's got a plan, right? More than uh, which is so much better than ours, isn't it? His ways are higher, his thoughts are higher, and so if we can just constantly lean on him, rely on him uh, for strategies and visions and goals, uh, you know, um, um, our ministries would flourish for his kingdom. Okay, so that's the role of the youth pastor. And we just quickly went through the role of the core team members, uh, uh, the expectations of them, right, of the core team member. Um, and then very briefly, we went through um, how the youth meetings are organized at APC. We have MYM, which simply means monthly youth meetings, uh, because there are four, five uh, locations uh, I can only be at one location at uh, you know at a given point, so we have uh, one monthly youth meeting uh, once a month. Okay, and then we have a combined youth meeting called pit stop uh, that happened once in three months or two months, uh, depending on the schedule, where all the youth of all the five location comes together uh, and 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 have fill and have a time of fellowship and learning. So that is called pit stop. We call it pit stop. You can call it whatever you want to in your church, in your ministry. Um, okay, and then the importance of life groups. It says the life groups are the life uh, of youth ministry. In fact, it's the life of the church where that's where discipleship happens. That's where fellowship is built. Relationships are built. Um, right. So life groups are crucial. Um, we, speak, we spoke a little bit about uh, going to schools and colleges and ministering to kids and students there. We are calling that Campus Elevate. Um, you know, that's the student ministry, uh, which most of you have been part of, by the way, isn't it? Um, so that's, those were the few things we saw in Chapter 4, how the youth ministry is organized at APC. Um, okay, so and you can go through it and see what is necessary for you, what will fit best suit your ministry at your location, uh, at, you know, at, at the church that God has placed you and and kind of tailorize it, okay, customize it to your needs. Okay, um, now we'll, we'll uh, look at chapter five, the challenges in youth ministry. Okay, chapter five. Challenges in Youth Ministry in your PDF. Please uh, follow along in page 20. Um, now, we're going to look at this chapter in two uh, categories. Okay, we're going to divide this into two main sections, this entire chapter. One is a perspective from a leader. 
okay so challenges in youth ministry for the youth pastor or youth leader and then the second half we'll see the challenges that the youth are going through um at, in, in this uh, given day and age okay so we'll start off by looking at just a couple of challenges that a youth uh, pastor or youth ministry leader uh, will will have to face okay um so the first thing there you would see is common challenges faced by youth leader, youth uh, minister in youth ministry uh, is the number one thing is impatience. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a huge challenge for us. Impatience. That means uh, we want results yesterday. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we, while we just think about it, we need, to, we need things to happen at that moment. And that leads to impatience, and then impatience will lead to frustration, right? Angry, and then that frustration will lead to disappointment, uh, and then at the end, by even before you know it, you might want to give up uh, on uh, on what God has called you to do. Okay, so the first challenge we want to address or look at is impatience. Okay, uh, this is a typical feature of young leaders who normally aspire change and a new way of doing things. Uh, you know, many young leaders want to change, uh, want change to occur yesterday. Unfortunately, sometimes their area of organization is not ready for these changes. Uh, when we take up a new role, uh, you know, in ministry, or if you're just new to youth ministry, um, any ministry for that matter, uh, we think, okay, to make ministry better, we need to bring in changes, which is part, which is true partially, but then we come and change everything expecting results to change immediately right uh, but it doesn't work that way okay what you have to here's what i would like you to remember guys is youth ministry i want you to look at it as a marathon and not a hundred meter sprint dash okay what is a what is a marathon we all know what is a marathon, right? You run a race for minimum five kilometers to 30 kilometers, right? <laughs> a hundred meters dash, it, it, it'll be done in say 20 seconds, 15 seconds. Um, that's, you run, you sprint like a cheetah. You, you just go from one end to another end, hundred meters, it's done, 15 seconds. But a marathon takes time. Okay. Uh, Any one of you uh, been uh, is an athlete, or been in sports, who understands athletics? Anyone? Sudar, Dave, Kanan. Okay, I know we all play basketball in church. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, not basketball, volleyball. <laughs> what was I thinking? Okay. Uh, so I'll give you an example of a person who uh, who is a a hundred meter dash sprinter, and then another person uh, who is a marathon runner. Now, the way both of them train for their sport will be so different. Now, marathon is about endurance, right? Long term. Okay, it's you have to not just be strong physically, but you have to be super strong mentally. You have to think. You have to strategize. Okay, this is where I'm going to pick up pace. How am I going to last for so many hours? How am I going to push myself for thirty kilometers, forty kilometers? How am I going to keep going? Okay, so the way they train. Uh, is completely different. And so I, I, I remember, uh, you know, when I, I think I was in seventh grade or something in school. I don't clearly remember. Um, I was into sports. I was into all kinds of uh, athletic uh, sports, long jump, high jump, um, but uh, hockey, volleyball. But I was also a 100-meter dash sprinter. I was not a marathon runner. And so... One day, uh, a TV channel came to our school and they said they want to organize, uh, you know, 10 kilometer uh, marathon, you know, around this area of, uh, you might, you guys know, Henur, where the Bible college was, right? <clears throat> and so it's like, okay, and you guys are going to come in the TV and all of that. And I was like, wow, I'm going to come on TV? Okay. Uh, and then, okay, there I am at the start line and... Uh, 
the whistle goes off and there are like about 50 some people on the road okay you know how marathon is there's a lot of people i'm running okay <laughs> so i lasted a little more than 100 meters i i kind of touched 200 meters after 200 meters i'm out of fuel no more gas you know uh because i was like i can't do this i didn't even last one kilometer i, I endured one kilometer with great challenge and this marathon was a 10 kilometer marathon mm -hmm. and so i did not understand or know or make an effort to train for a marathon but here's the challenge with us in ministry is that we approach a certain ministry that God places you and you want yeah, expecting changes to happen like that instantly microwave results. You put this bottle of water inside, okay, you want it to become hot in 30 seconds. Um, impatience. But what we forget is ministry, youth ministry in our context is about endurance. It's about it's a it's about marathon. Okay, you you uh, you start training yourself differently, right? You you train yourself in different altitudes, right? Where the oxygen level is less. How can you push? Can you push? Can you push? Can you push? Right? And that's why in if you, and you see in Hebrews chapter twelve verse one it says, "Let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us." Okay, let us run with endurance right he is not uh, you know, the writer of the hebrews is not just calling us to be a 100 meters dash is like okay, this in life and in in general <laughs> ministries we got to endure we got to endure anyone can come and survive for a month and do something very fancy you know uh, for a, for a year and then it's, it's easy to quit but then for you to do it month after month after month after month and year after year after year and going enduring different challenges <clears throat> enduring different highs and different lows that you might face that's when our character is tested right um and we i, I don't want to go through the exam all the examples uh, of the people in the bible who waited who endured Right, but you know them all, right? Joseph, uh, David, Moses, Caleb, who all had to wait and endure patiently. And they all looked at it as a marathon. Okay, and that's the only thing is going to help us, uh, you know, with this challenge of impatience. Okay, uh, God doesn't give the promised land to Israel in one day. It was a gradual conquest. Okay, God put together a journey that allowed them to develop their faith and confidence as they learn to depend on him. Similarly, the foundation of your ministry is strengthened as you develop faith, skills, leadership, experience, character, discipline, passion, patience, and endurance. Okay, so, uh, you know, if enjoy the period of you know, like this race of like, that's like a marathon. Enjoy it. Uh, cherish it. Knowing that God is teaching you something and you are learning something. Right? Are you guys with me? Hope you are. Okay, so that's the first challenge uh, for the youth pastors, youth leaders uh, in this day and age. The second challenge is time management. Hmm. Time management. Uh, now, when you are in ministry, there's always going to be work. Right? It is always going to keep you busy. Right? Because it, ministry demands that. Right? Uh, it's like you're working, 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 constantly working. It's like uh, on paper, you might have a weekly off and whatnot, but you'll never know. You might get a call here and there. It's like, okay, we need you here, pastor. We need you there, pastor. Uh, we need you to come to this. We need you to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Now, there will come a time where you will just snap. It's like, you know, you will just lose your temper. It's like, oh, come on. I need a break. 
you know, I can't keep doing this. Have you been there? Has anyone been there or is it just me? <laughs> okay. Now, there are many demands of youth ministry will keep you busy. Uh, in your notes, it says you'll eventually snap or burn out if you don't manage your time. Right? To do this, you need a healthy understanding of your priorities based on the church's value and expectation. So, uh, one reality you'll quickly learn is that youth ministry, ministry in general never ends, as I just mentioned. Okay. Uh, remember this line. If you don't manage your time, people will manage your time for you. Okay? If you don't manage your time, people will manage it for you. Now, in simply in a simple way, how you can have control of your time is by learning to say no. Okay, learning to say no. I think it's a very Indian thing is that we like to say yes to everything, you know, because we don't want to make that person feel bad. If a person asks for help or a favor and whatnot, it's like, um, hey, Siddharth, can you do this? It's like, yeah, sure, I can do that. And another person will come and hey, Siddharth, can you do this for me? It's like, yeah, sure, I can do this. And another person will come and say, hey, can you do this assignment for me? It's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you with this. Um, and you're like, okay, you've, you've committed to a lot of people now, but you will not be able to do any one of those work properly. Now, while doing other people's work, <laughs> while doing other people's work, you have forgotten to do your work. You'll be at the end of the day, you're like, oh, I forgot to do mine. And so remember this word prioritize. Okay? Prioritize. Prioritize your work, your role, your responsibility. Make sure that you get your work done. Okay. Now, in everything that I just mentioned, I'm not saying don't help people. That's not the point. Right. But in work is work. Okay. I think another tendency that we tend to have in ministry is that, ah, ministry, it's okay. We can just take a chill pill and I'll help everybody else. It's, you know, and whatnot. But then if you can just bring that little corporate mindset and say, my work is important because if I don't do this, it is going to affect a lot of other things. For example, uh, so I'm the youth pastor and I'm planning for the youth camp right? And uh, I have to plan the announcement dates and send it to the media team way in advance. Now, is that work important or not? Now, if I don't send the dates, they are not going to get the dates from me. And then they, you know, all the slots will get full and uh, everything else is going to get affected now. And then, then I'll suddenly go and, and, you know, I'll be in a rush and say, no, 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 I need these days. I need these days. And they'll be like, okay, okay, how do I accommodate this now? They're going to go in a panic mode and whatnot. Now, all of that happened because I did not do my work properly. And in the process, I was trying to do and help everybody else's. What happened is that I did not prioritize my work and manage my time. So I want to encourage you to learn to prioritize and manage your time. Because if you don't manage your time, people will manage it for you. Okay. Um, this is a beautiful uh, book and I would encourage you to, uh, you know, read it. And if you want it, please message me. I have a PDF of it and I'll give it to you. It's called Deep Work by Cal Newport. Okay. Um, I would encourage you to read that. guys. Uh, uh, it's in your notes, by the way. Deep Work by Cal Newport. Uh, it's an excellent book on uh, time management skills and how you can develop it. Okay. Now, uh, most of you or some of you might already know that I, I serve as the youth pastor and associate worship pastor. That means um, I, I have to uh, take care of the certain aspects of worship ministry as well. 
right? So uh, this is how I I kind of divide, uh, you know, categorize my time or prioritize my time. I would say is um, so from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. The first half, I'm only going to focus on youth ministry. I am not going to let anyone come and distract me or talk to me about any other part in the ministry unless I get the work done fast for that day. From 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you know, this is what I'm going to focus on. No matter what the temptation is, it's like somewhere in the corner of your brain is like, talk about worship ministry, do that worship ministry, do that work. It's that still pending. It's like, no. I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to finish only the youth ministry work and then get into it. Because then what will happen is when you're working on something related to youth ministry and then, okay, it's like this quick thing re requires attention from worship ministry and you do that and that one thing will lead to another thing in worship ministry and that another thing will lead to another thing. You get what I'm saying? It's like a chain reaction. It's like, let's just keep going, you know. So it's very important to stay focused, uh, prioritize, plan your time, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, and then the second half from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m., I look at everything uh, related to worship ministry. And um, and from 5.30 to 6.30, if there's any other miscellaneous work that needs to be done, general work that needs uh, attention and whatnot. Okay. Um, so how you can go about managing this time, ask yourself when you are at your best spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, okay? Ask yourself, when are you at your best? Like, when are you, like, sharp and thinking straight, you know, uh, when all those creative juices are flowing, uh, best spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, okay? For some of us, it could be early morning. Uh, for most of us, it could be late night, okay? Uh, we come alive from midnight, 12 o'clock. When the whole world is sleeping, that's when we are like, all right, this is my zone. Okay. Uh, whatever it is, you recognize it. Uh, you identify what works best for you. Um, and then complete most of your important tasks during that time. Okay. Those, I, that's what I will call it as the most productive time. Okay. What am I calling it? Most productive time you have to identify that okay from between 6 a.m to 8 30 a.m is when i am at my peak i'm fresh i'm thinking straight and whatnot that's when i'm going to respond to uh, all the emails get all the work done i'm going to uh, delegate uh work assignments whatever etc etc and that's how you learn to manage time now this is just a couple of pointers guys okay there's so many skills uh ideas, pointers on how you can manage your time well. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that's kind of helped me is uh, now I said 9 to 1 p.m., right? 1 p.m. that I work, focus on youth ministry. You know, that doesn't mean I don't take breaks. Okay. 9 to 1 p.m. is almost like three and three and four hours, right? It is important for you to take breaks. So you set alarms, okay? Uh, whatever, if you have those, one of the small cube kind of clock that you can set alarm for every 30 minutes or in, in your phone, like a recurring alarm, focus on it for 30 minutes, take a five minutes break, stretch, uh, and then come back and set alarm for another 30 minutes, focus. That's called deep work. That's what Cal Newport talks about in his work, in his book is uh, deep work. That means there. You know, and he gives uh, examples of Bill Gates and so many other uh, very famous uh, established people about how they get work done and why are they successful, um, etc. So on and so forth. Okay, um, so that's the second challenge. The third challenge, uh, which is huge uh, for youth pastors and youth leaders uh, in youth ministry, uh, is discouragement. Okay, discouragement may be the single most powerful feeling that entices you know, great women and men to exit prematurely from youth ministry. Okay, look at those lines very carefully. That the discouragement could be the most powerful uh, reason or feeling that will make you quit. Okay, quit, give up prematurely. 
Okay. Uh, the nature of discouragement is abrupt. One day you are feeling like you are the best youth pastor. And the next you are thinking if you are really having an impact. It happens to the best of us. Okay. One day, one moment you are like, awesome. This is the best job in the world. Next day, you're like, oh gosh, why am I here? Okay. So what we have to keep in mind, uh, guys, is that anywhere where people are involved, the task becomes difficult in, in a context of youth ministry. Okay. Um, there, and there are so many, uh, there could be so many reasons that you, that, that you can get uh, discouraged in ministry. There's so many reasons. One, uh, I've just I've listed out a few things in my uh, experience. Um, one is lack of respect. You know, just people don't have respect for you. They don't respect you. They don't respect your decisions. They don't respect your time. Uh, they don't respect what you say. Um, and they're like, they'll do whatever they want to do, um, et cetera, et cetera. So you feel disrespected and that will lead to discouragement. And the second thing is uh, sleep deprivation. Uh, okay. Um, so at the time of me uh, making notes, uh, writing these notes, that's when uh, Ethan was born and uh, and you, um, challenges of a new baby is challenging. Okay. You don't get to sleep much, um, but with the work and whatnot. So you're sleep deprived. It's like you're walking around like a zombie. It's like, you know, trying to keep, uh, you have to get work done. Um, so you can get discouraged with that conflict and confrontation problem, problem, problem with people. Okay. You have to, uh, you have to confront someone that you, you know, and you don't really like to confront you. You don't like to go ahead and say that, Hey, uh, what you did is wrong, you know, but that comes up and that with that, you get discouraged, uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding, uh, too many calls and emails to return to. <laughs> okay. Uh, trust me. You'll get there. Okay. Uh, criticism. Um, youth who are difficult to like. Come on. Okay. I was not a youth uh, that my youth leaders liked. Because I was very rebellious, I was very naughty, I was just too hyper, uncontrollable. Uh, it was like a dynamite that I could go off any time. <laughs> okay, so I, I kind of relate to that. Okay, uh, there there will be some people that you might just not like who who uh, who will irritate you uh, and that that will just discourage you and whatnot. Let's just be fair. Uh, core team not cooperating, failure to please everyone, failure to please anyone. Um, and when you receive an email of disappointment uh, from a from a parent, uh, from a parent of a youth or, or or another pastor or whoever, saying, "Roshan, I'm disappointed with you. How could you do this? How could you take the youth to that place when you know that it is so dangerous?" How could you choose that topic? Why you didn't choose my son for this? I am disappointed in you. Is anyone relating to what I'm saying? Yeah, at least can I getting an idea? Yeah. But those are all, you know, the the kind of reasons, and it might you might face so many other new challenges. Uh, you know, that's not in that list. But the point is, anything can come up to discourage us. And the devil, the enemy, will use it to make us quit in our ministry prematurely. But that's when the writer of the Hebrews saying, run this race with endurance. Okay, just when you feel like giving up, just keep pushing. One more step, one more step, one more step. One more step, just keep going day by day, right? And in this beautiful scriptures in Corinthians, he says, in your weakness, my strength is made complete and my grace is sufficient for you. So in the grace of God, you take another step. In the grace or in his grace, you face another day. 
right? He's like, okay, Lord, you give me the strength for today. You give me the oxygen for today. You give me the oxygen for today. You supply my needs. You you are my strength, uh, you know, when I am weak. Um, so, and all of that uh, is the beauty of ministry. Yes, there are challenges, uh, you know, uh, where is there no challenge, right? But our strength comes from him. And he's the one who gives us the strength to endure and helps us run this race uh, with endurance. Amen. So uh, just a few pointers. Uh, what I mentioned there is uh, a practical steps to battle discouragement. Practical steps to battle discouragement. Okay. Uh, be confident that you are not alone. As it says in Psalm 23, verse 4, even though I walk through the darkest valleys, deep valleys, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Okay, so we are not in this uh, alone. And uh, Matt Redman in his book called Unquenchable Worshipper, he talks how God uses a season of brokenness to make us more like Okay, uh, so how can you help yourself? Uh, find an experienced mentor. Okay, find an experienced mentor. Uh, pray about your mentor. Uh, look at people inside and outside your church. And then ask yourself, who inspires me? Who encourages me? Who confronts, corrects, and challenges me? And who do I respect? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right? Respect, uh, you know, and if you find a mentor, uh, and if you, uh, appoint, you know, if you have a time of appointment with that person, um, don't be late to those meetings. Respect that uh, your mentor's time. Show up before time. Okay, show up before time. Um, this is one principle that I uh, that I follow, which I learned in a movie. Uh, it says, uh, "You are late if you are on time." You are on time when you are early. Can I say that again? Okay, uh, it's, it's from a movie called Drumline. And um, it says, you are late if you are on time. You are on time when you are early. So if, you, if you're meeting, if you decided to meet someone at 10 o'clock and you show up at 10 o'clock, uh, that means you are late. <laughs> it's always good to be early, say 9.55, 9.50. Uh, it talks something, it, sh it will show something about your character and it will say that I value my time and I value your time um, as well. Okay, so uh, just a practical tips of how to battle discouragement and managing your time, etc, etc. Okay, and then take a long, hard look at your weekly calendar and make sure there's alone time. Okay, alone time. Make sure you have time for yourself. Have a hobby. Uh, you know, uh, have a hobby. Uh, it's super crucial. Go play badminton. Uh, have, you know, football. Learn uh, something new. Cooking class. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's very crucial, guys, okay, for ministers, for leaders in ministry to have a hobby. Something to do outside, besides the ministry painting, whatever it is. Okay, so have a hobby. All of these are practical tips to overcome uh, in battling discouragement. And then finally, make a personal commitment to last. Okay, make a commitment saying, you know, come what may, I'm going to last. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep enduring. Okay. Um, the fourth challenge is communication. We are in page uh, 23, by the way, uh, in your notes. Communication. Communication is important, but what's more important is getting your communication right. Communication is more than passing along a verbal set of commands. Uh, great leaders understand the effective, that effective communication is more than talking. Okay, uh, if you can highlight that uh, in your notes, please go ahead and do that as well. Okay, great leaders understand that effective communication is more than talking. 
uh, guys, we need to understand the power of communication. Because of miscommunication, world wars has have happened. <laughs> okay, it's powerful. It is strong. Um, so being able to communicate, uh, it's not just related to speaking, uh, like it says here, right? So, but here, communication is a skill. Okay, so learn to be clear in your communication with your senior pastor make sure he stays up to date with a weekly bi-weekly monthly quarterly report so you, you are communicating something about youth ministry with your pastor right you're telling him pastor this is what happened last week this is how many young people who came to this youth meeting uh, in this month we'd covered so and so topics um and and so many this is how many times we met what are you doing you are being accountable you are communicating by being accountable right? because you are under the supervision of your senior pastor isn't it okay so that's important to remember communicate clearly what your vision is with the senior pastor and the youth core team right? in chapter two we learned about the power of vision right? youth ministry with the vision uh, being able to communicate that with your senior pastor and he sees um, uh, what your goals are and then have multiple channel or modes of communications uh, with your audience right have say for example newsletters emails website updates text messages social media so many platforms mediums we have today in our day and age uh, to communicate with our audience seamlessly on a regular basis make use of all these mediums all these modes uh, which is going to be very helpful okay uh, and uh, there is no such thing as making one point too many times that means it is okay to keep reiterating your vision okay keep communicating often don't think are you okay if i keep saying this one more time what will that person think how many times will this person say okay this is one of the reasons why we play the vision of all people's church announcement in our church we, uh, announcement video every sunday right every sunday is like oh, why you, you, we don't say like, oh, i have to play this uh, thing every sunday salt and light in city salt and light salt and light for how many years we've been playing no it's a crucial reminder time and time and time again to know okay this is our vision that's where we have to go that is where we have to go. That is where we have to go. Right? Uh, let's consider the story of uh, Joshua and Caleb, right? From uh, when, when Caleb and Joshua finally get their promise, they are 45 years older than when they received it. But for those 45 years, they were fixed. Okay, that's the goal. That's the land I'm going to get. That's the land Moses told me I was going to get. And then Caleb says, I am stronger than ever. I am stronger today as I was stronger that day when I went in. So, so I am going to possess that land. And so he was just fixated, focused on his goal. And so there is no um, over communicating at all. You you can keep communicating as much as you want, as often as you want, okay? Uh, repetition is good. Make sure uh, flyers and posters have necessary information. Uh, if you're planning an event, uh, make sure it has all the necessary information about uh, where, when, who, what, how much. Um, because if they don't, you failed to communicate uh, clearly. Okay, so in communication is another important challenge that uh, as pastors, as leaders uh, in ministry, we need to learn to communicate very, very clearly. It is a skill, guys, okay? You know what is a skill, right? If you want to learn, say, dancing or coding or graphic designing, um, it's a skill that you are going to learn. You are going to invest your time in. Okay, I'm going to sit for one hour and I'm going to learn graphic designing. You are spending your time in learning it so communication is a skill so if you are here and if you are telling that um, communication is not my strength what am i going to do about it what are you going to do about it there's like endless uh, supply of resources available on the internet on helping you become a better communicator 
so make use of it okay um and then finally intimacy with god intimacy with god and this may be the last point last challenge but your intimacy with god is your fuel for the fire in you and your ministry it is what keeps you fresh with revelation after revelation with encounter after encounter okay so in my earlier point i mentioned that youth ministry will always have a work to be done but a ministry for the for the law should never take priority or precedence over our ministry to the lord okay um, our ministry for for the people should not take priority or precedence over our ministry to the lord amen um and so no matter what you do make sure you are fueling that fire of you by building that intimate relationship with him okay so what were the five challenges that we uh, looked at the first one is impatience okay learn to run the race with endurance and the second one is time management if you don't plan your time your people will plan the time your time for you discouragement and communication and intimacy with god okay so uh, and if you can address and face these challenges then um, you 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 will be um, healthy and your ministry will will will, will thrive okay uh, and with that i will uh, we will end this uh, session today okay does anybody have any questions guys anything you would like to add or say or something because i've been the one who's talking the whole time Okay, I guess not, but I stopped the recording. Um, thank you all for joining uh, and I'll see you once again tomorrow, okay? Take care, God bless you. Thank you, sir.